this competition next year, the World Club Challenge. Leeds, champions of the Northern Hemisphere 4, Melbourne Storm, champions of the Southern Hemisphere 4. Nothing to choose after the first 40 minutes. Leeds are out, Melbourne dawdling. They must know it's raining outside. <laughs> yeah, and it's... Uh... The tactics are going to prove vital in this second stanza and that man has a big job on his shoulders now. The responsibility of the skippering the side now that Kevin Sinfield and that is a very sorry sight to see. Such an influential player and more so in the kicking department. Well he stayed in his kit and he stayed out there because he wants to go up and he wants to pick the trophy up leads his men up or at least be part of what he hopes will be celebrations and you know it, it can affect certain players and i'm referring to rob burrow that responsibility may just give him that extra lift it, it seems and appears to me this season to not have that same sort of zip that we've seen from him and i think in the second half i think you'll see the likes of rob burrow asking a few more questions taking on this very, very strong defence, of course. And Melbourne and their coach Craig Bellamy, they've, uh, they've often been criticised in the past for slowing things down at the play of the ball, in the tackle. And we've seen that in the first 40. Will Richard Silverwood, the referee, do exactly the same in this second half? Two years ago, Leeds beat Melbourne Storm 11-4. It meant Brian McLennan had won a trophy after just five games in charge. Can history repeat itself? Or will Melbourne, will they go home tonight with the World Club Challenge in their luggage on the jumbo jet tomorrow? As we have said, throughout the night, they have not simply come here tonight to make up the numbers. Their preparation has been good. Their acclimatisation has been good. And they have no excuses, they say, if they lose. Leeds, though, desperate to fly the flag for the Super League. Here's Billy Slater. And again, a poor kick. Rob Burrow straight to the fullback. No way through, though, for the uh, Melbourne Storm winger Luke McDougall. Nearly had the, the shirt ripped off his back. This is Anthony Quinn. Two. And he played nine times last year. And uh, the number five for Melbourne, it's his first appearance in the jersey since the 21st of June last year. It's a testimony to his fitness that he's out there. Here is Aidan Tolman. Hinchcliffe at dummy half. Cameron Smith stabs the kick in behind. And Greg Inglis is chasing this. Brett Webb has got a bit of work to do. Does it very well. Stepped away from Inglis, couldn't get away from Cameron Smith. And that should have been a penalty. Cameron Smith just hanging around under the legs of, uh, of the full-back. Fair play to Melbourne, you know. They're looking at the referee, they're waiting for him to shout move, and when they shout, he shouts move, they move. I, I think the important thing, Eddie, is he shouldn't be punished for good technique. If your technique is good in the tackle and you control the ruck, then as long as the referee's satisfied with that and he calls moves and you start to you start in motion, there's nothing, there's no problem with that. A lot of it is up to the referee as to what he calls. It's a 40-20 attempt, this. And it's a much better kick. It allows the chasers to surround him, and that they have done, and they've finished him off. He's going to try to force the error now, and uh, as you can see, that every time a player on both sides does a tackle, they're virtually looking at the referee and say, can I keep him down or should I let him go? It's, it is different, Phil, and you picked it in the first couple of minutes. It's different to what we've seen so far this year. Is it, is it better? Well, personally not, but I mean, we've only seen half of a game under that way. I think that I think about a four second play, the ball's about right, but uh, with a 10 meter rule. I don't want to detract you now from this game, and, and it's about adapting to the conditions, adapting to the interpretations. And at the moment, Melbourne again, they start games particularly well, they started the first half strongly, they started the second half quickly too. Cameron Smith just a little fumble, and uh, Jamie Jones did well. And he did brilliantly, finding Brent Webb. Here's Burrow, scampers away from one, strings it up now, Burrow. <laughs> Oh, attack of the head there by Tolman. Benedict. And that's exactly what the Rhinos needed. Well, we were 
requested that uh, Rob Barrow ask a few questions, and uh, the question was, will I get my head knocked off? Bang, poof. Penalty wasn't given for that, it was given for interference. Here's Greg Eastwood. Good solid run from him, starting off the bench. He was substitute for Brisbane in the 2007 defeat against St Helens in this World Club Challenge. Now Kylie Luluai. Great story for him, isn't it? This is his third consecutive World Club Challenge. And he's won a grand final in each of his three seasons with the Rhinos. Jamie Jones gives it to Delaney. Delaney is halted. Anthony Quinn with the tackle. That's not allowed. Delaney took a chance there. Maguire. Maguire can't get the arms free. He goes down tackle number four. What the crowd can't hear, of course, is the referee shouting move to the players. That's why they're getting a bit frustrated, the crowd, that is. This is Lulawai. Last tackle. Badiris at dummy half for the Rhinos. Give it some height. Burrow. He does. Puts it up to the corner. Well claimed in goal by Luke McDougall. Great positioning by the winger. Remember, it was McDougall that uh, salvaged the... Melbourne Storm, Wait. it looked as though Webb had scored, Wait. but Doodle got right underneath him. He was held up in the in-goal area. At this level, Lloyd, you have to be critical of that kick. It didn't allow any of the Leeds players a chance to contest for it One. in the in-goal area. Move. A real let-off for the Storm. Hold. Hold. Go. Hinchcliffe again. Ball comes into the prop forward, Tolman. Two. Move. Hold. Go. Hinchcliffe shows it to one. Oh, that's a good hit. That's a great hit by Maguire on Hep Cahill. On uh, Baduras, beg your pardon. Slater, all got to him somehow. He spins out of one challenge. And again, it's Baduras there. He's working overtime, not a nice fit. Oh, he's got to put offside. Shakes his head in disbelief. What about that for a hit? Working very hard indeed, and as both defences have had to do that as well. I mean, there's been some punishing runs, very few breaks. Hinchcliffe. And now it is the Melbourne Storm who are attacking that lead line. With Cahill. As the minutes tick away, you, you just get the feeling it's going to be coming from a kick if there's going to be a try scored. Brilliantly picked up off the ground there. Nielsen plays the ball here to Slater, more and more involved. Here's the prop forward again, Tolman. Leeds knowing they're having to defend their line here for all they're worth. Finch, good hit by Eastwood, low down. Last tackle here for the Melbourne Storm. Cameron Smith slides the kick in, it ricochets off the foot. Oh, he's outside. There's Maguire outside, they let it go. Maguire is going to have a go here. Right to the corner, Maguire into the field effort. He'll score the try. But was he outside? I think the referee will hand this upstairs. Greg Inglis leads the protests. Was Danny Maguire in front of the ball? Judge was very much in line, though. It's a 50-50 it's call, this. Bang. Oh, has he got one foot in front? It's when he makes a contact. It's a position when the ball makes a contact. Don't forget, though, that camera has some depth, doesn't it? It's not completely in line. Well, Delaney's got his, his right boot it's way out in front. From me, Eddie. Wishful thinking. It's, it, look, look how he's got his leg way out there. Well, now, when you look at that, and that's the reason why you can't go for forward passes. Yeah, yeah. And, and Maguire's sort of half going backwards. I think they'll give it. I think because Delaney's wow. boot is so far in front that it's level. I think he's offside. <laughs> I think they'll give it. Well, that's from the opposite side of the field, of course. Well, I don't think that uh, I don't think that helps. But the chance of the try being given by Phil Bentham, the video ref tonight, is that 
Delaney's boot is so far forward. I think this will stand. Well, you have to give the benefit of the doubt. There's no conclusive evidence that he is offside. Well, he'll raise the roof if T.R.Y. comes up on the big screen. Well, if it does, it means that uh, Danny Maguire picks up three tries in a World Club Challenge, if it's given, in three different World Club Challenges. I, think he's, on, I think he's onside. And when he made the break, I'm thinking, will he have the speed? Well, they're looking at the ground here, and the crowd know that means this is going to be given the green light. It's building, it's building! Here comes the roof! Danny McGuire, his try is given a length of the field effort. And he is now marshalling the troops and talking to them. So Danny McGuire's try, the first try of the night. That's what you'd be calling this try. Remember, years and years ago, it was wide to West. Well, it'll be Delaney, Delaney's boot now. Maguire, I didn't think he had the legs, but he did. That is a vital try. And are they happy? You bet your life they are. There was a big question mark against it, but Danny Maguire is a big game player. Three World Club Challenge tries. Three grand finals and tries, and Burrow to try and add the extras. A nudge leads towards glory. He has kicked it! 10 4 the Rhinos. Celebration, but there is still a long way to go. And fair credit to the video rep, Bill Bentham. He didn't panic over this one, he wanted every single angle. That's when he came up on the big screen. That's when the smiles cracked the face. They'll up the tempo now with the storm. This is uh, Ali Latiti for Leeds, suddenly ahead by 10 points to four. And with a little spring in their step, what have Melbourne got in response? Well, they can only go through the same process of what they spoke about at half-time. That just goes against the run of play. Sometimes you need a bit of skill or you need a bit of luck to change a game. I think Brett Delaney will say it was skill. I think most people watching it will say there's a little bit of luck involved in that. But it doesn't matter because it's a score and I've got no issues with the try. I think Danny Maguire was onside. I've got no problem at all. Melbourne are a champion side, so we'll see what their response is. Well, the kick from Maguire is straight into the arms of Slater. He tips the ball inside to his winger, Quinn. And Leeds, well, they are invigorated now. This is the other winger, McDougall. Leeds are, buzz Leeds are buzzing in defence as well, and, and leading that charge is Danny Badiris. He, he, he's getting himself all over the park. Now, will we see more of Billy Slater? I haven't seen him chime into the three-quarter line all that many occasions. Last time we were here in November for the Four Nations final, England were ahead at this point, and we all know what happened after that. Slater was taken out. Slater was taken out as he went to chase that kick. I think it was Kylie Lulawai who stood in his way. Bump. Yep. It's always a big argument that you don't have to move out, but he was taken out on the move. Taking a quick penalty here. The ball is wide, and here is the try in the corner for McDougal. And Melbourne Storm respond immediately. And the try is given without reference upstairs. There was nothing to question. There was a quick tap taken, and Leeds came in to try and tackle the man who had taken the penalty and the referee shouted give him 10 they had to drop away and the melbourne storm luke mcdougall on his debut here tonight has come up with a try that will challenge the leeds rhinos again you remember this and it all came about by the silly penalty they gave away
that put them in good position and the first opportunity they've had the entire game. The Storm get the ball out wide and it is well finished. Early in the game, try saver. Later, late, pinch. later in the match and he, he knew that they could get it there. Beautiful pass from Nielsen. What a night for this fella. Brother of the former test winger Adam McDougall, Luke McDougall, over in the corner. And uh, well, this is a difficult kick for Cameron Smith. Tight to the touchline. 20 metres out. Taking it back about uh, three or four metres. One of the best in the world, though, this fella. They've gone quiet all of a sudden, and look at that for a kick. Scored a level. Leeds' advantage lasted precisely 120 seconds. You can see that Leeds got themselves in a bit of a tangle. They were not alert, look at that. They were just about three or four of the Leeds players had their backs turned, and Melbourne said, we'll take full advantage. Thank you very much. All locked up Go. again. Straight Ten up, all. There was never going to be much between them, I suppose. Straight Wasn't going to be a day like uh, at Wigan for the Melbourne Storm, and they won 44-6. Smith was the dummy half. That's a run from Lima. I think one of the worries for the Rhinos fans, Eddie, is oh, Greg Inglis. He hasn't had many touches of the ball here yet tonight, but at some point in 80 minutes, he's going to have some influence on the outcome. He came through on close support there, and I think he's just warming here now for the contest. Here's Finch again with the kick right up the middle, and that's going to run far too deep. But they'll be happy with that. They'll just uh, settle their line on the 30-metre yeah, yeah. mark and uh, defend and look for the mistake from Leeds. Interesting move now, Eddie. Cameron Smith has actually gone into play. Looks like he's going to play in the nine position at, at dummy half because uh, Rory cost Jason looks like he's got on the field. So I'm sure he's going to play a pivot role and share that with Brett Finch. That will probably make the Melbourne Storm just that little bit smarter around the ruck with Cameron Smith at dummy half. Yeah, Rory costs Jason. He uh, is the surprise inclusion. He gets the nod ahead of uh, Luke Kelly, who's the captain of the under-21 grand final winning side for the Melbourne Storm. You're wearing 14 tonight. And I know they are predicting a big future for the man with the almost unpronounceable, certainly unspellable surname. There he is, the bottom of your screen, number 14. Just watch out for him. Want you straight out that look? Make sure we come straight out, OK? Badiris will try everything he knows here. Eastwood. Good solid run from Greg Eastwood, but that's the last tackle. I'm surprised that they're not using Greg Eastwood a little bit wider, rather than having him tunnel down into the middle. That's a lovely kick. Oh, it just skipped away from Callum Watkins. He just hesitated. He didn't really know what the ball was going to do. Maguire's kick to perfection. He didn't know whether to use the boot or whether to try to grasp it, and it just went away from him. It was a horrible bounce, but yep. everyone with Leeds colours and Leeds fortunes in their mind would be thinking, what would have happened had Scott Donald been there? It was a shocking bounce for young Callum Watkins. The Rhinos, of course, they'll uh, not only try to get possession back with a big hit, but it's important now that they don't allow the Storm to get anywhere near the halfway line because I, I, I feel that the Australian outfit have been better served with their kicking game than what Leeds have so far tonight. Good hands from Kos uh, Jason. He got it to uh, Tolman, who plays the ball. And here is Inglis. Bounces off. Watkins, but there are reinforcements there. Four, Quinn. This is Lowry. Bus, five, move. Last tackle here for Melbourne Storm. 
Okay. Up it goes off the boot of Brett Finch. It's a towering bomb. Billy Slazer's after this. He's missed that. It's a knock on, says the referee. Didn't miss it at all. He obviously got a fingertip to it. But I think from what we're seeing here in the first 56 and a half minutes of 2010 for Melbourne Storm, they're going to be the team to beat in this year in the NRL, aren't they? Well, it's a, it's a tough defence, isn't it, Sean? Yeah, I was going to say, Steve, the thing is we're seeing the Melbourne Storm here without Cooper Cronk, who's very much the orchestrator of, 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 the, of the team. I know he works well with Cameron Smith, Brett Finks there as well. Brett White, of course, the uh, international front rower is not here, and a couple of other signings, so they've, we've, we've probably not seen them at absolute full strength, but what we are seeing is a side that works very, very hard. They work with wonderful intensity, they've got terrific speed, and they've got a great understanding with each other, and... Uh, so the early signs are, are good when you consider that their competition doesn't start for another couple of weeks yet. Yes, they've got a great work ethic, haven't they? Don't want to labour the point, but it is a, a very slow play, the ball tonight. Maguire. That's better. Brilliantly picked up, though, on the slide. Oh, not the best pass forward the mark. Touch sets. He disagrees. Hold, hold, go. Well, that was very dangerous play. I'm not so sure that uh, Craig Bellamy, the coach, would be happy with that. Let's go, Move. Hold, hold, go. Different angles. Here's Finch again, running it this time. Nielsen. That's very oh. Melbourne-like, isn't it? Go. To shift the ball inside their own 20, have players running across field, a lot more direct there now with a straight carry and a 10-metre. I know Four. they were trying to go around this Move, compressed Jeremy. Leeds defence. Go. The change in focus here. And it's Cameron Smith again that we've all got our eyes on. The player there with the number seven on his Plus. back. Just about to put his hands on the ball. Move. Good set of six, though, this for Leeds. Go. Now, what's the kick going to be like? Not bad. Finds the ground between Webb and Callum Watkins, and Watkins is the man who picks it up. Great chase One. by Melbourne Storm, though, Move. wasn't it? And uh, Kevin Proctor getting the tackle in. Two. You feel Move. that the game's now at a critical stage, don't you? Yeah, when it creeps into the final quarter, a lot of the players out there will be very tired. Two. They've, they've yeah. worked overtime in that defensive pattern. And that's when the errors come. Three. And uh, Surrender. Surrender. Well, at times, it, it's so slow. You think we got back to the 1930s? It's <laughs> Oh, it's a penalty here for Melbourne. I think Keith Senior has said something out of turn to the referee. Well, he was furious with him. Well, you'd think with all the years of experience... And they're going to kick it goal. Well, of course they And the referee wants a word with Keith Senior. There's one thing being frustrated, another thing, inventing <laughs> your What's opinion. Listen, I call surrender, OK? So they get a bit more time in the tackle. Understand the surrender call. Stood up for it. Get it. Well, it could prove very costly indeed. This kick could give Melbourne the lead for the first time. Melbourne fans. They're watching as Cameron Smith lines this penalty up. Captain of the grand final winning sides of nine and seven. Absent when they lost in 2008. Got a try here in the Four Nations final. Has scored three goals tonight with the boot. This for the lead. Never in doubt, never a question. Leeds 10, Melbourne 12. And the influence from this fella is beginning to creep into the style and the tactics of the, the Melbourne Storm. He's taking control out there, his kicking game, short and long, has been pretty good. And as we've just witnessed there, nerves of steel to pull over the goal takes them to the lead. And we hit the hour mark. 
Hold. A dangerous on. quarter remaining. Bill. Eddie, uh, Keith Senior paying the price for his uh, dissent there and his dissatisfaction with what he thought was a decision well, from referee Richard Silverwood that uh, again didn't penalise Melbourne Storm for what Leeds feel is uh, deliberately slowing the play the ball down and I'm told that during half-time behind the scenes that opinion was expressed to officials from the Rugby Football League by uh, members of the Leeds Rhinos backroom staff as well and quite forcibly as well so they are getting frustrated and Keith Senior's just paid the price for that on the pitch Yes, I don't think we will um, hear the last of this tonight somehow Leeds frustration but uh, you are still convinced that that played somewhat into their hands, the Leeds hands in the first half. Well, there was a period where, just before, about ten minutes before the half-time break, is that, uh, oh, never got a penalty, a relieving penalty as well. Lack of concentration from, uh, from the big star, Cameron Smith. The, the point that I was making, there was a period for ten minutes where the Melbourne Storm were playing it a little bit wider, they were making movement. They had three or four play, play the balls where they had 58, 60 metres forward. And Leeds were struggling to get their defence back. And so this slowing down could be proving an advantage to Leeds as well. It's level on the penalty count, 8 all. So it's consistent both ways. And that's all you can ask, isn't it, of a referee? If he blows one way as long as he does it the same for the other side. Here's Ian Kirk now. Remember, it was very early in the piece, his charge down. Leeds were pressing then, they are pressing now with Badiris. Here's Senior. Gets the ball away. Burrow. Trying to dodge underneath the big men, they're saying he lost that. They're looking at the referee who says move, and they do. It's with Maguire. Maguire, Eastwood has put the thing down. Oh, and Eastwood has had a go at Adam Blair. It looks as though they're going to square it up, and you can see there that Blair's thrown the elbow. Eastwood didn't like it. Hey, see, if you pull the man down as he gets up to play the ball, you are bound to concede a penalty. Well, a lot of the fans, and I'm sure a lot of the viewers, will be thinking, well, this is a little bit farcical, is it allowing everything and anything to go on, and then... He'll pick on some and let others go. Brent Webb obviously interfered. See, well, I, I think he's, he has, I mean, it's frustrating, but he has been fair to both sides. It's been, it's been the same for both. Yeah, but a lot of fans have been saying, why on earth is an English referee refereeing differently from oh. what we do? Oh, what a hit! It was Eastwood, and it was on Aidan Tolman. The point I'm making, Eddie, is that they'll be saying, why has he changed his style? when he does it different all through the season. Because it's a World Club challenge, Steve, I suppose. Here is Proctor. Doesn't matter what the fella in the middle does, this has been a tremendous contest. That's not the best pass from young Kost Jason. Will be knock on. Put the scrum down, Slater thought he was away. And Melbourne are complaining that that maybe should have been allowed to go. Okay. Well, he should. He came off the back of Brett Delaney. Well, it wasn't a Melbourne Storm got anywhere near it. I suppose in many ways, Delaney could have been penalised for taking the man out. No. Well, Slater thought he was away. Well, he blew the whistle very quickly, Richard Silverwood, so there was no chance it would go to the video referee because if it had gone over the line and put the ball down, it would have had to. Yep. I think Silverwood thought straight away that uh, it did hit the Melbourne player first. Ian Kirk, who's playing tonight uh, for his first start of the year, came last week. He settled the result at... Uh, Salford with a last-minute try. And he's got the penalty. Well, you can see they're trying to turtle them. And on this occasion, Mr Silverwood said, I've had enough. And I still maintain that the only way they're going to get through again, Leeds, is maybe that little chip over the top. Maguire and Eastwood it goes down. Move, Badiris with the pass to Burrow. 
Burrow then back to Webb. And Webb gets it wide to Ryan Hall. Down he goes 10 metres away from the Melbourne dry line. It's with Burrow again. Now Diskin. Diskin helps it on to Peacock. Keeps the legs going, Peacock. Underneath the sticks he is. Good work by Cameron Smith, though. He's hanging on to the ball, carrying arm. And no chance for an offload. Burrow! Just cut down by Proctor. Last tackle here for Leeds. Can they get a repeat set? Drop. Oh! Oh, Maguire was thumped out of it then. Well claimed behind his own line. By Quinn. There seemed to be something after the ball had gone on Rob Burrow. Maybe it was just too quick. Maybe there was nothing in it. Move that! Smith to dummy half for Melbourne. Here's Proctor. It's been a real grind, hasn't it? The forwards, they must be very nearly on empty now. Two, go! Well, it's a good point you make, Steve, because this, this may well be the part of the game, 15 minutes to go, where Melbourne Storm do start to fatigue. Because they haven't played a lot of rugby league. I know they've done a pretty tough pre-season, and they had that, if we call it a warm-up game against Harlequins last week. But, but let's remember, the Leeds Rhinos have played four Super League matches. Four Super League matches, they're in great shape. Smart work again from Cameron Smith. I wonder, if, I wonder if they'll take a kick at goal. He knew that they didn't have the marker square and he ran straight at Peacock, looked at the official, and Mr. Silverwood said, Yep, you're right. He wasn't behind. You took full advantage. There was a bit of a debate then between Cameron Smith and his players. In the end, Cameron Smith selected to go for the throat here and try and put the game to bed. And here is Brett Finch. That's Bromwich Square. and uh, Kost Jason go. is uh, waiting for the ball first receiver. There he is, and he'll go through. Hauled down by Diskin, but look where Melbourne are. Right under the sticks, Cameron Smith on the charge comes Tolman. Cameron Smith again. Finch wide. Good defence on McDougall. Keith Senior looking at the referee, waiting for the word move. Proctor. Good legs. Last tackle here. Slides the in goal, it's loose. It's a goal line dropout. Nielsen was hunting. And Ryan Hall to the rescue. Maybe it'll tip through again. Applying the pressure. As I say, Cameron Smith, his influence is growing throughout this second half. Did well there, Hall, just got there in time. You know, Melbourne have had more chances attacking the Leeds Le half. Three goal line dropouts to none is one of the reasons. They're great at trapping their opponents in the in goal area, forcing the ball out to play, winning it back here with a dropout restart. He asked the video referee just to check that before allowing the. Uh, the play to continue, and then he was sure then he made the right decision, so play continues, and this is Tolman again. Move, Jamie! Stand back! Go! And it's Bromwich. Jay. They're 20 metres away, Move Melbourne. Back. Two tackles Go. gone. Go. Cameron Smith. Finch. Slater. Go. Clawed to the Go. ground. Line. Line. Ian Line. Kirk. Go. Cameron Smith, here is Proctor, Proctor to Tolman, short ball and it's the loose forward, Lowry. Get square. Square. Cameron Smith is scheming Go. at dummy half, will slide the kick in again, that's too long. Too much weight, knows it. We survive. And you can see that Melbourne had already set this up, but he couldn't get through. It's a controlled restart, the referee has to blow the whistle. The players must be aware of that. He was in position to blow the whistle, it was but he didn't blow it. waiting for the defenders to get back. I think that's part of the reason, isn't it? I think he's got to, hasn't he? If we're playing under international rules, and we have to assume tonight that we are... Don't have I mean, to you're the role of the defenders to get back. The guy could be walking back from the goal. 
the, the point you make is good, but that was exactly the most it was in the Four Nations, wasn't it? No? <laughs> I, I think Philip is a bit frustrated. It's getting tense here now. <laughs> and Leeds can find Five. somewhere through. It's impregnable, isn't it, the Storm's defence? Ten and a half minutes remaining. They've got to find something from somewhere, Ten and that's a Johnny. high, high kick. Billy Slater, though, it's, it's just like... I thought he no, shouted okay. for the mark then, I thought we'd change codes. Well, they just stopped and said, come and get me. And they're quite happy, Melbourne. They know they've got a pretty strong defence. That was a big hit there by Lulawai. That's the confidence that they have. They know that their work rate in that defensive effort... It's been superb again tonight. Go. Here's Tolman. There's some big hits gone on out there, you know. <laughs> it's a tough game. Go. But Brian McLennan, Leeds coach, has, has got to do something different here now. When they do get the possession, they can't wait too long. It's got to be a little bit of brilliance, chip over from Maguire, maybe Burrow. But trying to penetrate just with brute force is not paying off for them. That's a great kick again from Cameron Smith. Watkins gives it to Brent Webb. Look at the chase. No, he's caught him anyway. Here's Watkins again. Two, Big night for him, three, isn't it, at 18? He was a sub four, against Manly last go. year. He's played from the start tonight. And on the wing in place of uh, Scott Donald. Three. Move! Sean, you're diving forward. It's Jamie Jones Buchanan. And he gets it away brilliantly to Maguire. Now here's a chance for Leeds. You see, there's no chance of a quick play of the ball, Go. and that gives Melbourne time to get into one solid line. Burrow taking on Proctor. Going down eventually. Last tackle for Leeds. Up it goes again off the boot of Maguire, and this time another high one again. Slater underneath it with ease. And look out. Whoops, he's running around all over the show. Did a 360 then. Stand! Go! Bill, let's get down to you. Any news from the side? Eddie, you've got to admire the way Billy Slater has been rock solid underneath these last few bombs that has launched his way. And it's not surprising, really, because I'm told that earlier this week he spent an extra two hours after training just working on collecting the bombs and uh, did that at the uh, John Charles Stadium, South Leeds, after training and worked and worked and worked on collecting them. It's obviously paid off. And uh, just a bit more news from the sidelines. It's obvious that Kevin Sinfield's not going to be coming back. Leeds refusing early on to give up on that hope that he could, but this injury to his left leg has obviously uh, caused him a lot of problems. There's an Possession. And even though the referee's blown the whistle, they were still going into the defence. You know, when Leeds have needed to get out of trouble for the last five years, Eddie, they've gone to the left and they've gone to Keith Senior. They're going to get possession here, I suspect, on the halfway line with this scrum, which is the knock on. I'm not saying you have to do it now, but they've got seven minutes left. And to get through Melbourne, they're going to need something special. Well, maybe a kick from the scrum base. Remember, in this modern day of rugby league, they don't have a full back when you put the scrum down, but. That chance is now gone. Here's Brent Webb. They've gone down the left-hand side, and Senior is waiting. This is Ryan Hall. Surrender! Stand! Could have been a penalty there. Bailey. Move! Diskin is a dummy half. They go left again, and here is Senior. It's going to be a brave decision from Richard Silver with the referee if he's going to give a penalty that could give Leeds a chance to square it all up. Here's Jamie Jones Buchanan. They have Watkins wide. Oh! Another video referee decision coming up. It was a great effort. He was airborne, but did he touch the corner post? We'll soon find out. As he lost it. It's no try, he's lost, lost control. It. That's the second occasion he's had to dive. He was airborne straight into it, and you'll see that there's a drop ball there, and it just separates. No control, no try. Well, 
That's the fourth occasion we've had and no try given, and this will be confirmation of that. Sadly, if you're a Leeds fan, 20 meter restart. Twice Callum Watkins has been denied tries in the corner for Leeds, and that one would probably have won the World Club Challenge. Great ball from Jamie Jones Buchanan, great effort, just a little stumble. Yeah, just slipped, didn't he? Full effort, though, by Billy Slater. Here's the first one. one. That was early Go. in the first half. Yes. He's impressed Ten. with this guy, Move. Brian Hinchcliffe. Hold. Hold. Got through a Go. lot of work. Good hit. Three. Terrific Three. hit by Ryan Hall. Hold. 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 Nielsen felt that. And here now is Lima again. Four. Move. Hold. Hold. Go. Cameron Smith. Tolman. What? Been a real slog, hasn't it? A real Move. slog. Go. Certainly not a night for the three quarters. Skills. Okay, You're okay. That's a good kick. It's a great kick. Oh, Brent Webber's lost it. Oh! Come back for the first, will he? Hand over. And with the turnover, Lima lost control. There's another Leeds player down. I think it might be Brent Webb. But Brent Webb couldn't take the high kick in, and uh, he got a clattering for his pains. I thought it came off him, but uh, maybe he turned his back. Anyway, he was in a bit of strife. Less than five minutes remaining now. And Leeds have got no substitutes left. So with. What they have out there now, they have to see it through to the end of the match. Move. Some four and a half minutes. Go. They've got to take the gamble, as I say, you know, it, it, it's got to need something different. Four. Move. Hold. Hold. Go. They'll it's take, uh, they'll, they'll take um, heart from the fact they've been over the line. Five, well, there was twice, wasn't there, in the first half, Go. and they got over the line and there was held up, and Peacock was in an inch, and they've been... Asking questions to the video referee three times. Look out, here goes Billy Slater. Look out, here goes Billy Slater. Great chase back. Eastwood again. Tremendous work. And full credit, though, to Billy Slater. He realised that they were closing in, and he made sure that he held on to that football. Move. Possession is vital. They know that, Melbourne. Craig Bellamy, the coach, will be sending out the message, just nothing too fancy. It's Three. Finch who goes down on the third. Move! Hold! Go! Cameron Smith. Inside. This is Proctor. Three. Four! Move, Kelly! Just right to the line. Hold. Cameron Smith has that experience, Go. knows he'll put a little grubber into the in-goal area. Four. Try to get the Plus. second set. Five. Solid Five. run from uh, Blair, that was. Go. Here's Cameron Smith. And it's uh, that young man cost Jason and he's held up just short of the line it's the turnover but look where it is it's no good for Leeds there it's going to need another length of the field effort from Danny Maguire this or somebody three minutes to go big Ali Lautiti oh an awful play the ball an awful play the ball from Ali Lautiti he's more experienced than that well, he was facing at an angle, wasn't even facing this six right, just gets up. Oh, that's a shocker. Loss of control of it all together. And the seconds tick away. He's annoyed with himself, I think, Lao Titi. Calm down. And when they look back, Leeds, if the scoreline stays this way, and if Melbourne... Look at this, shocking. Was it an Ian there? I don't think so. They look back at this, Brian McLennan, no, but there was just one moment of madness, remember, when three or four Leeds players were not alert, they had their backs turned, and before they knew it, McDougal was in for the try. And then there was the penalty given for back-chatting against Senior, that at the moment separates the two teams. Here is Finch, and here is the try! that will win the match from Anthony Quinn. He's not given it yet, but Melbourne are celebrating like they've won the grand final.
He's touching the grounding. It needs checking. It needs but it checking. Close, but it close. But it close. That's a try. Maguire trying to keep him out. No problem. He took the safe option, did Richard Silverwood. He was in a good position, but it won't take Phil Bentham long. Try is given. A Melbourne Storm gained revenge for what happened two years ago. But there's a lot of verbals going on out there. Quick hands, they went at it, and uh, the war of words continues. Adam Blair tries to calm things down. He knows that Brian McLennan, that they've had the opportunities, Eddie. They have had the opportunities, and I think their frustration because they have had this on their mind for so long and they were so determined to win this World oh, Club Challenge. But uh, so too were Melbourne and they have come 12,000 miles halfway around the world to do just that. And the try from Anthony Quinn has just meant that they will go home with the trophy. Atrocious play the ball on an attempt there from Laotiti. Gives them a position. That's all they have to do. That's what they get paid for. Good play. All you do is get the overlap, bring out the defence, and they came, the winger came in, and as soon as they had two men running in, it allowed the space for this fella to sneak in. And there is a culprit, and uh, I must say, Jamie Peacock will be devastated. As with all the Leeds Rhinos, Well, they became the first side in a quarter of a century to contest four Australian Grand Finals. And this remarkable story of the Melbourne Storm just goes on. As Cameron Smith tries to just put a bit of icing on the cake, and how about that? 18 points to 10, Melbourne Storm. In 15 World Club challenges since Wigan's defeat of Manly way back in 87. That's 23 years ago. Only four Australian sides have won this World Club challenge. And Melbourne tonight become the first to win it twice. There's the final siren. It's joy for Melbourne. It's despair for the Leeds Rhinos. They came here two years ago and were beaten. They came here in 2010 and they were intent on revenge and going home with the silverware. And you can see what it means to the players of the Melbourne Storm. It's like they have won the grand final itself. It's an amazing feeling. You can look at each other in the dressing room and say, we are world champions. And it's a golden opportunity for not many players. Leeds, to be fair, they played exceptionally well. But they've named the man of the match as Cameron Smith, who kicked magnificently and led them brilliantly. He's with Bill. Cameron, that was a feisty game from first to last, wasn't it? Oh, it was, mate. We, uh, you know, we knew from two years ago that it was going to be like that, but you know, that's what it's all about. It's the two best teams in the world at the moment. And... I think it you know, lived up to every rep reputation everyone thought it was going to be and hope we uh, really entertain the fans tonight. And it's about keeping your nerve as well, wasn't it? Because it was it, it pretty quickly became apparent that there wasn't going to be a lot between the two sides. No, that's right. You know, there was only, what, two goal kicks, two penalty goal kicks each at the start, and, you know, four each. There's never going to be uh, too much points difference there. So, but the boys did a great job. You know, we had a lot of young guys in our squad and they held our nerve, like you said, and we got the points in the end. I was going to mention, you know, Ryan... Cost, Rory Cost, Jason, and uh, Jesse Bromwich as well, you know, the youngsters. He left some guys at home, and there were question marks about how it go. They stood up well. Yeah, oh, they did, mate. You know, and Rory was great. He was great last week against uh, the, the Quins. And big Jesse Bromwich, he's only a young fella, but come up come up against a very good uh, four-pack tonight and held his own. Well done tonight, Cameron. You got the man of the match as well. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Man of the match and uh, very well deserved. An excellent servant to a great star, Cameron Smith, captain of the Melbourne Storm. 
and uh, he got that try here in the Four Nations final, of course, that uh, they won, the Australians, that is, in uh, the autumn. And, uh, well, his smile tonight is as wide as it was that night. It, it means a lot to them. It certainly does, and, uh, you know, we've spoken to Craig Gettler, Bellamy and all the Melbourne Storm. They, did the, they came here with the intention of lifting the trophy. They've done that. It'll be a happy camp. But Leeds will be ruined the fact that they did not turn those chances into points. And that perhaps sums it up as well in many ways in regards to the fact that this Melbourne defence, let's take nothing away from them. You know, Craig Bellamy has often said that, and, and I must say they've been solid tonight. Let's hear from Billy Slater. Bill? I know this meant a lot, especially after what went on two years ago. Yeah, certainly did. We, we felt the, uh, the other end of the stick uh, two years ago, and we certainly didn't want to feel that again. It was a tight match here. It was, a, it was a draw for a long time, and um, the boys dug deep, got some good field position, and yeah, we got over the line in the end. There wasn't never going to be that much between the two sides, was there? Nah, certainly not, especially in these conditions. It's wet, it's cold, a bit of mud, so you know you can't really throw the ball around too much. Although you've seen, seen a little bit of it tonight, but uh, nah, first hit out for most of the boys, and um, you know, we're all glad to come away with the win. No worries. Brian Carney is uh, with us up here. They uh, they came determined, Brian, didn't they? Absolutely. It's a joy to watch, really. There's a, a ruthless efficiency to everything that Melbourne do, and I, I suggest that if there's any aspiring coaches out there to watch that game again and look at the subtleties in the play of Melbourne, both in attack and defence. There's nothing complex about what they do. Sometimes they run at one, one out, but it's the, it's the support runners they have. Look at them work in the tackle, how well they wrestle in the tackle. They were refereed, the referee was very good tonight. He was even and fair to both teams, but Melbourne were just better in the tackle than Leeds were tonight. And I think there was one telling line, Phil, during the course of the commentary from Bill. Billy Slater was out for two hours after training this week, just up the road here, practicing for two hours, catching the bomb. You know, there are a lot of players in Super League who stay out practicing as well, so we, wouldn't, we shouldn't just think that they're the only ones practicing. But well, I think he's got some great that. skill. He has got some great skill, Billy Slater. I thoroughly enjoyed the game. It was a good contest. And people like Callum Watkins have had work experience that you couldn't buy. You know, you've got to think now, for the next five or ten years of his career, he's at such an important developmental stage in his, his career. To, to play at this level against so many great players and have this exposure will do him the world of good. Will do him the world of good, but uh, sadly, from the, a British point of view and the Super League point of view, they have come up the winners and Leeds have sadly come up just a touch empty. But here they come. Billy Slater and company going up for the uh, World Club Challenge Trophy. The first team from the NRL to claim a second such award and doing it on foreign soil, of course. It really is a remarkable story, their rise to prominence in alien rugby league territory, where the number one sport in the state of Victoria is Aussie rules. They've got uh, rugby union to contend with as well in 2011, but the Melbourne Storm will fly the flag for rugby league down there. They're a magnificent team. Certainly are, they very, very well coached, and we saw that discipline in the defence right the way through. They, we often say defence will win you games, and it is a very important trophy that they will be flying back home to Australia with, but you have to look at the experience and the, the wonderful effort from Cameron Smith. As the game just continued on, he was more efficient, he took control, and it was, no, it was no sort of thing like that, that he was controlling it late in the match. And Cameron Smith lifts the trophy, and Melbourne Storm have got their revenge for two years ago. They go home to Australia with the 2010 Gillette World Club Challenge Trophy.